You like hockey? You like sports cars, but you don't know the market too well for hockey cards? What's a young gun? What's a future watch? How come I cannot find the silver prism of this uh, Connor McDavid guy? That's a lot of questions and you're at the right place because today we're going to talk about modern hockey card collecting. Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great day. Pat here at Card Collector HQ with a video that uh, I hope you guys are going to enjoy. So today I'm really excited to be talking about modern hockey card collecting. Um, I noticed there's not a lot of videos on YouTube that covers this market. Uh, a lot of football, basketball, soccer, baseball card collecting, but hockey uh, is maybe a little less popular, uh, but up here in Canada, it's uh, pretty much the number one sports, number one uh, sports cards market also. And there's a lot of interesting things going on. And uh, my goal here today is to start awareness, um, hopefully bring a little bit more people into the hobby, answer your questions, and uh, just, just have fun talking about hockey cards. So let's go. So I'm a huge fan of hockey. And uh, like a lot of collectors today, when in the 90s, I used to collect sports cards and especially hockey cards. They were everywhere at the grocery stores, at the convenience stores, at every corner you can find them. Um, then there was this, this crash and I left the, the hobby. I went on being a teenager and uh, I've been back since 2015 uh, because I was intrigued by this uh, blaster box of OPG that I noticed at at Walmart I think and then I bought it and I was like okay this is for kids what am I doing but um, that was really the first step into getting me back into the hobby and all the way up here now to trying to make a business selling sports cards and doing this YouTube channel with you guys. The first major difference that collectors coming from football or basketball are going to find in hockey is that Panini is not really into the game meaning that they do produce some specific sets uh, that are mostly featuring Rangers players uh, Kapokako and Vitaly Kravtsov but um, the official license has been granted for the last seven years to the company Upper Deck so since the season 2014-15 they are the only major uh, trading card company that can actually produce sports cards with the team name and team logos on their jerseys so there's also in the game ITG and Leaf that also have a couple of cards and a couple of sets every every year but these will mostly focus on either uh, minor players or retires and Hall of Famers um, with brushed off logos on the cards and, and no official team name but you can still some find some pretty good gem pretty good values but they're usually a bit less popular so if you're just starting in modern hockey I would not recommend to start right there. So let's talk a little bit about the players. So if you know the sports, um, and obviously if you want to start collecting, it's because you have some some kind of interest uh, in hockey. Um, so you probably all already know the Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, Alexander Ovechkin, um, Austin Matthews in Toronto, Nathan McKinnon. So these are really the top guns, the top guys to collect and to invest in um, in modern hockey. Uh, some of them are more proven than the others. Crosby won a few cups, uh, OV also. Um, but McDavid, hopefully, this is going. This history is going to come one day. Um, but these are the really bigger guys to consider. But you also have lot of good stars, up and coming guys, young guys like the Hughes brothers, so Jack Hughes, Quinn Hughes, the defenseman, defenseman Callie McCarr in Colorado is all is also pretty good. Elias Pedersen in Vancouver, you've got Leon Dreisaitl, David Pasternak, Sebastian Hajo in, Ca in Carolina. So tons of young great players that uh, are really gaining popularity in this uh, dynamic, really dynamic sport. So these are all good players. Then you've got the different positions. So usually the forwards are the most desirable um, and the more collectible cards than the goaltenders and then the defensemen. That's usually how it goes. Obviously it depends on the names and the stars, but that's the kind of popularity that we're seeing in the hobby. 
but the player's team is also important so cars from the Montreal Canadian from the Maple Leaf Toronto's always attract a lot more popularity same goes with the Chicago Blackhawks um, Boston Bruins the New York Rangers so usually the original six team from the beginning of the league uh, get more interest whereas star players from Carolina from Florida from Arizona from different other smaller market clubs they will attract less sales and less interest and that's where you can find some pretty good buy low opportunities uh, all right so let's talk about the different sets that upper deck is producing each year and i'm going to separate them into three categories so like the low end the mid end and the higher hand sets i'm gonna, not going to go into all the details of all the sets but I'm gonna cover the, the basics and so you have a little bit more info on how to navigate into the hockey card market first section the the lower end card market we're, here we're talking about MVP we're talking about Parkist we're talking about OPG so these are the uh, the cars that you'll find on blasters at Target and Walmart um, they do have the obby box version but they're usually a lot cheaper than the other set of cards um, the autographs or jerseys are going to be either non-existent or really um, really really rare so mostly people collect them for their base card their, their parallels um, and also just the accessibility to these cards so for instance like I have the, this year's Parkist here you're gonna find um, so as you can see it's pretty standard design pretty bland no glossy kind of cheap cardboard but it's all right I mean they do have some shiny inserts that are not too bad some parallels also but if you're investing that's really not the type of cards that you're looking at a set that is really popular among set collectors is the OPG and I have I have a, a older version here of a card and this set brings a lot of nostalgia uh, from collectors because you, you get the feeling of the cardboard the color here like when you collected cards when you were kids this is the biggest set pretty much the, it is the biggest set of all upper deck portfolio with 600 cards um, so it's really designed at set collectors uh, we're going to who are going to build the set build the base cards and then there's a few parallels no autograph no jersey so it's really old school and then you've got the retro set that is much tougher to pull together but it usually the cards really stand out and are pretty interesting so that's actually how I got back into the hobby by collecting and by trying to make the the OPG set so I think that's a good starter point for most people if you're interested in knowing a little bit more uh, into the hobby into the sport but not so much in terms of um, investing and reselling because you know even the best rookie in the OPG version will not come close to the young guns for instance young guns let's talk about them so moving on to the second tier I'm going to call like the mid mid tier so the most popular product um, they vary in the price range but no doubt the most popular hockey card set is the upper deck series 1 and series 2 that they release each year so like the OPG and the MVP they're usually the the earliest set August or September so before the season starts so usually um, what's the inconvenience there is that you'll see photos taken from the year before and uh, so people have moved signed with another team during the offseason been traded and then you get the new card with the old jerseys in so that's sometimes a turnoff uh, usually series one though is the first set of the year that is released after the season is started and when you get like bright colorful pictures with the newest jersey on the players and why uh, people are collecting this set it's usually a smallish set meaning that there's like 250 cards 
uh, in the main set and there's a whole bunch of inserts 50 of them that are the rookie cards called the Young Guns a few examples here, Jack Hughes, Nathan McKinnon um, got my McDavid in the background over there these are one of the most popular rookie cards in hockey because they get a lot of value they're short printed although they're not numbered and they're easily accessible because you'll find uh, tins, blasters and retail box at retail but also hobby box where you can get um, the uh, acetate version, the, uh, the exclusive version number to 100 and all different other uh, possible uh, inserts and rarer stuff but yeah that's usually when you collect a player you want his young gun if you're just starting into um, investing and reselling go with the young guns um, people are just buying the young guns of, of the players or trying to build a set year after year so even for no-name guys uh, there's going to be a, some market for them especially when the new set is released and uh, so this whole set is usually divided into two halves so you have the series one that's coming off in in, in the uh, the first half of the season and then series twos when you get all the the new rookies that uh, started to play during that season and uh, you're going to also get like OPG update um, from new players and a bunch of other different things talking about young guns three different kinds um, most popular ones because there's the acetate there's the exclusive young gun number 200 to 100 I'm gonna use Brandon Gallagher here because he's a he's a guy IPC so I got a lot of his cards so this is his regular young gun and this is his canvas young gun so canvas is like a subset of the series 1 and 2 you have like 6 6 or 10 of them each box or they're a lot more rare and especially the young guns they're uh, produced on a different cardboard also so they feel different they're really nice so these are kind of two variation of young guns for the same player sometimes what, what you'll find also is the jumbo card here uh, Cody Glass jumbo or oversized that you'll see so be really careful because if you're just buying one card off of eBay for example um, you might look past this little detail in the listing title but it's really important because obviously it's a different card um, do I need the comparison here so same year um, but yeah it's, it's the oversized version so it's a different card obviously much less valuable so if you're if you think you're getting a awesome deal maybe just double check make sure it's not a jumbo or an oversight these are still nice cards if you want to have in your collection but not the same and not as desirable as the regular Youngen. moving on to another set that is also really popular for the rookie collector and is sp authentic so sp authentic kind of similar uh, but a little higher hand um, they have really like cl clean clean base and they have the uh, the future watch and that's really what you're looking uh, when you buy the this uh, box of this set you want the future watch or the future watch auto or the, uh, the future watch RPA going back to Gallagher so that's an example here of his future watch usually on card auto because it's really a nice set you're gonna pay a bit more than the series 1 and 2 for a box of this um, you're not gonna find them in retail so that's usually where it stops at series 1 <clears throat> but it's an interesting set nonetheless another set that is uh, a bit different this one because it's really focused on uh, memorabilia into the cards and I'm talking about SP game used so they have all kinds of variation but a lot of jerseys a lot of patches coming out in different shape or form with the all-stars all-star uh, event uh, game any kind of game warm jersey that's also a interesting set for people that are looking at different patches and numbered version of these cards so that's something that you might want to look into and uh, rounding up this section 
Uh, one of my personal favorite is the OPG Platinum series. Um, so it's a much smaller set, usually around 200 cards. Uh, they usually uh, copy a little bit the OPG standard uh, design, but these are shiny cards. These are chromium cards uh, for the base set. And uh, what they really specialize into is parallels. So a little bit like the uh, mosaic and, and prism where you have different colored and different numbered parallel, you're gonna find something similar in OPG Platinum. And it's not the only one, but it's one set that is really gaining popularity amongst collector in the obby because they're usually pretty pretty nice looking card also and um, I'm looking forward to this year's set it's coming up late like in September usually it would come up at the end of the season towards April or May um, with the recent jump in prices I'm hoping it can still be affordable somewhat um, but yeah that's usually a set that I collect personally coming back to Brandon Gallagher once again just to so different versions of these cards. These are from two different, uh, three different years actually, but you're gonna find usually some kind of gold parallel here, number to 50. Um, each year they have different non-number, like this, that here they had the ice blue tracks, there's the violet pixel, there's a bunch of different numbered or not numbered version in parallel of the same card. So that's really interesting, especially if you're like to collect one player or if you like to uh, collect to invest then you can find some pretty interesting uh, parallel inversions and for also the rookies you're gonna have signature it's gonna be on card signature also that's a really really nice set there so a bunch of other sets that I'm not gonna cover in detail here but you might uh, be interested in looking at I'm talking about SPX uh, artifacts that is also uh, popular that you want to look into um, Allure that is a kind of a newer set that started the last season I'm looking forward to see uh, how it goes this season a lot of parallels in this set also but a lot of die cuts so that's something a little bit different and uh, Trilogy is also uh, an interesting set there to look into alright now moving on to the higher hand so the big name here that you want to keep in mind is the cup. So the cup, it's really the higher hand set in hockey. So when we talked about the best card for a specific player that you want to get is Young Gun, his Future Watch, and then is Rookie Patch Auto from the cup. That's another price range, but if you can afford it, if you want to specify on less cards but higher value cards, this is where you want to go. There's also Black Diamond, there's Premier, there's Ultimate, different sets that are really um, high-end and nice looking, I think, personally. Um, I'm not too sure about, about buying boxes of these sets. I think um, for the price, you're usually much better off targeting singles instead of boxes because boxes will get you like from three to less than 10 cards anyways. and you know, it's a big gamble on what you're going to pull at that price. It can be tough to make your money back, but if you're investing in singles and collecting singles, I think it's a much, much better way. And uh, the cup, all the base cards are numbered to uh, two for 249, I believe. Um, to, and then there's gonna be like gold versions and all the different numbered parallel also on card signature. The patch auto also are usually really nice looking with with the logo, team logos on it and so forth. I don't have a lot personally in my collection, um, so I don't have a lot to share to you guys. Maybe put in some pictures here and there. Um, but yeah, so the cup, that's really something that you want to look into if you're more into the higher end type of cards. All right, so that wraps it up for this Aki Card Collecting 101 type video. Um, I'm a huge fan of hockey, this is my topic of uh, knowledge, so in this channel there's going to be much more uh, videos about hockey cards. Uh, if you'd like me to cover some specific topic, please do so in the comments below. Um, please ask, some, ask your questions, and as usual, if you enjoy the content, 
like the video, subscribe to my channel. Um, I plan to publish twice a week and uh, I'm going to cover sports card in general, but I'm going to dig a little deeper into the different hockey cards and the, and the hockey card market specifically. So I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day and talk to you soon. So yeah, that's it. I think that wraps it up for uh, hockey card collecting. I'm going to do some other videos uh, talking about Hall of Famer and Vintage and the this other side of the market. But for now, that's what I wanted to share you to share to you. Um, if you have, <clears throat> but for now, that's what I wanted to share to you. If you have some questions, comments, please do so in the comment section below. I'll gladly uh, strike a conversation with you guys if you found this content helpful to you like the video and subscribe to my channel. I plan to do this twice a week. I hope you have a great day. I hope to see you again for another video. Stay safe. Goodbye.